Please all stand and let's pray the angels. The angel of the Lord declared unto Mary, Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed are you among women, and blessed is thy fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Behold, the handmaid of the Lord. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women, and blessed is thy fruit of thy womb, Jesus. And the Word was made flesh. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women, and blessed is thy fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Pray for us, O Holy Mother of God. Let us pray. For forth we beseech you, O Lord, your grace into our hearts that we whom the incarnation of Christ, your Son, was made known by the message of an angel, made by his passion and cross, be brought to the glory of his resurrection, through the same Christ our Lord. Amen. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. Please be seated. Please all stand and sing the entrance hymn. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace and peace of God our Father, and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. And with your spirit. Today we are on the fourth Sunday of Advent, the last Sunday before we celebrate Christmas. And we have already lighted the fourth Advent candle in our Advent wreath to signify our nearness to the birth of the Lord Jesus. Today as well, we are joined by the Salesian Youth Movement of the Philippine South Province, who today celebrate the Inter Don Bosco Youth Clubs. We pray for all young people that the Lord may continue to be their guide through the intercession of our Blessed Mother. Coming together as God's family on this last Sunday of Advent, with confidence 
Let us ask forgiveness for all our shortcomings that we may welcome Jesus with a purified heart. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. Pour forth, we beseech you, O Lord, your grace into our hearts, that we to whom the incarnation of Christ, your Son, who was made known by the message of an angel, may by his passion and cross be brought to the glory of his resurrection, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated. A reading from the second book of Samuel. When King David was settled in his palace, and the Lord had given him rest from the enemies of every side, he said to Nathan the prophet, Here I am living in the cedar while the ark of God dwells in the tent. Nathan answered the king, Go, do whatever you have in mind, for the Lord is with you. But that night, the Lord spoke to Nathan and said, Go, tell my servant David, thus says the Lord, Should you build me a house to dwell in? It was I who took you from the pasture and from the care of the flock to be commander of the people of Israel. I have been with you wherever you went, and I have destroyed all your enemies before you. And I will make you famous like the great ones of the earth. I will fix a place for my people Israel. I will plant them so that they may dwell in their place without further disturbance. Neither shall the wicked continue to afflict them as they did of old. Since the time I first appointed judges over my people Israel. I will give you rest from all your enemies. The Lord also reveals to you that he will establish a house for you. And when your time comes and you will rest with your ancestors, I will raise up your ear after you, sprung from the loins, and I will make his kingdom firm. I will be a father to him, and he shall be a son to me. Your house and kingdom shall endure forever before me. Your throne shall stand firm forever. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. sing the goodness of the Lord. Forever 
I will sing the goodness of the Lord. The promises of the Lord I will sing forever. Through all generations, my mouth shall proclaim your faithfulness. You have said my kindness is established forever. In heaven, you have confirmed your faithfulness. Forever, I will sing the goodness of the Lord. I have made a covenant with my chosen one. I have sworn to David, my high servant. Forever will I confirm your posterity and establish your throne for all generation. Forever I will sing the goodness of the Lord. He shall say of me, you are my father, my God, the rock, my savior. Forever will maintain my kindness toward him. And my covenant with him stands firm. Forever I will sing the goodness of the Lord. Forever I will sing the goodness of the Lord. A reading from the letter of Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, to him who can strengthen you. According to my gospel and the proclamation of Jesus Christ, according to the revelation of the mystery, kept secret for long ages, but now manifested through the prophetic writings, and according to the command of the eternal God, made known to all nations to bring about the obedience of faith, to the only wise God, through Jesus Christ, be glory forever and ever. Amen. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please all stand. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. It 
In the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent from God to a town of Galilee named Nazareth, to a virgin betrothed to a man named Joseph of the house of David. The virgin's name was Mary. Upon arriving, the messenger said to her, Rejoice, O highly favored daughter, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women. She was deeply troubled by his words and wondered what his greeting meant. The messenger went on to say to her, Do not fear, Mary. You have found favor with God. You shall conceive and bear a son and give him the name Jesus. Great will be his dignity, and he will be called Son of the Most High. The Lord will give him the throne of David his father. He will rule over the house of Jacob forever, and his reign will be without end. Mary said to the angel, How can this be, since I do not know man? The angel answered her, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Hence, the holy offspring to be born will be called Son of God. Know that Elizabeth, your kinswoman, has conceived a son in her old age. She, who was thought to be sterile, is now in her sixth month, for nothing is impossible with God. Mary said, I am the maid servant of the Lord. Let it be done to me as you say. With that, the angel left her. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Please be seated. Maayong gabi ka na tong tanan. Mayang gabi po, Father. Hapit na gayod ang Pasko. Pila na lang kaadlaw, Pasko na. Hopefully, kining atong Pasko nga umaabot will be a meaningful and a happy Christmas. Pasko na, dili Pasmo na. No? O ang atong Pasko magpadayon gihapon tungod kang Kristo. Presence is defined as the fact of being in a specified place. It is a state of being in a particular event and place in a specific time. When one is having presence, he or she is present. And the person who is present is all out in his or her time and attention in a given circumstance of an event. It is in being there as something is unfolding or happening. Thus, a person who is present gives his or her presence to whatever he or she is doing, to whoever he or she is with, and to wherever he or she is. The presence of a person can also be considered as a present, a gift, that could bring enjoyment and fulfillment. Therefore, it can be said that presence is a present that we can give in the present. In relationships, presence is an important element between persons. One is aware of the other because of the quality of presence given. And we come to know others because we acknowledge their presence. They are there with us. Through this, we arrive at an appreciation of the uniqueness and the giftedness of each one. One could not imagine being in a relationship without the sharing of one's presence, being there for someone. And in this time of pandemic, technology tries to bridge the gap, the distance between persons, in order to have a foretaste of someone's presence. Even though we can communicate in an instant, this does not take place of someone's real or physical presence. The mere fact that one hears 
or sees the other virtually gives already simple joy with an anticipation of a future physical encounter. Presence. This is what God assured our Blessed Mother during the Annunciation through the angel Gabriel. The Holy Spirit will come upon you and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Reading and meditating on the event of the Annunciation of Jesus' birth allows us to look into the person of Mary, especially her feelings and emotions. When the angel greeted her, Hail, favored one, the Lord is with you. Unsaman ang reaction ni Maria. As the evangelist wrote, she was greatly troubled at what was said and pondered nganong gigreet man siya sa angel in that way. Then the angel continued saying, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. And then came the announcement of the good news of the birth of Jesus. Then after Mary listened to this news, she was still confused. That is why she asked for a clarification. How can this be? Since I have no relations with the man, unsaon man kini pagkahitabo. Then the angel consoled and assured her of God's presence in the Holy Spirit who will overshadow her. Thus, with this assuring presence, she gave her response. She said, Behold, I am the handmaid, the maid servant of the Lord. May it be done to me according to your word. My father worked as a seaman before. The nature of his work made him leave the family in order to earn a living. Yet, despite the distance, he gave value to constant communication. Very often, mutawag niya siya sa balay in order to update us about his work. And it gave great joy as we listened to him, to his stories in a foreign land. And he ended his calls with an assurance that he will be with us soon. Muulik na siya puhon. This simple experience of presence, though virtually, brought delight to me and to the rest of the family, of course, especially my mother. Beloved brothers and sisters, the presence of someone who loves us and who we love is assuring and consoling. Our Lord's active presence in the life of our Blessed Mother was something that gave her the strength and courage to face her mission as the Mother of God. The presence of the Lord in her was not a guarantee that she will be spared from sadness, problems, and difficulties. But this presence of God in her made her face all these with faith, hope, and love. And on this fourth Sunday of Advent, let us ask Mary's motherly intercession. She who was filled with God's grace and abiding presence all her life. This year's National Youth Day celebration has its theme, Young man, I say to you, arise. We rise with our Lord Jesus as young people because we are aware of His constant presence sa atuang kinabuhi. Let us remember, brothers and sisters, that we too are filled with God's grace and presence especially on the day of our baptism and confirmation, and that we renew this as we go back to the Lord through the sacrament of reconciliation and through our partaking of the Holy Eucharist. Our Lord Jesus is Emmanuel, God with us, and He is present with us, just like at to Mary at every moment of our life, in joy and sorrow, in triumphs and failures, in sickness and in health, in life and in death. Presence is a present that we can give in the present. Amen.
Let us all stand as we profess our faith in our loving God. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through Him all things were made, for us men and for our salvation, He came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake He was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father, he will, he will come, come again, again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. And I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. In union with Mary, God's generous handmaid, let us set our hearts to the Lord's will and implore from Him the grace we need to do so. Together we pray, Faithful God, hear us. Faithful God, hear us. That the Church and her leaders may always give priority to the building of strong communities of faith and action. Let us pray. Faithful God, hear us. That all the political and civil leaders may keep in mind that all their plans will come to nothing unless they conform to God's will. Let us pray. Faithful God, hear us. That all those who prepare for Christmas may prioritize their spiritual needs rather than exhaust their energies in the preparation of external decorations. Let us pray. Faithful God, hear us. That all those who do not yet believe in Jesus as their Savior may open their hearts to the message of God's Word and let it bear fruit in their lives. Let us pray. Faithful God, hear us. That all of us may live these last days of the Christmas novena with the same disposition with which Mary, most holy, prepared herself for the birth of Jesus. Let us pray. Faithful God, hear us. Let us pray in silence for our personal intentions. Let us pray. Faithful God, hear us. Oratio Imperata. God, God our Father, Father we, we come, come to you in our need to ask, ask your protection, protection against, against the coronavirus disease 2019, 2019 that has disturbed and even claimed lives. We pray that you guide the people tasked to find cures for this disease and to stem its transmission. Protect the medical experts that they minister to the sick with competence and compassion. We pray for those afflicted. May they be restored to health soon. Protect those who care for them. Grant eternal rest to those who have died. Give us the grace in this trying time to work for the good of all and to help those in need. We implore you to stop the spread of this virus and to save us from our fears. Grant this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. We fly to your protection, O Holy Mother of God. Do not despise our petition in our necessities, but deliver us always from all dangers, O glorious and blessed Virgin. Amen. Our Lady, Health of the Sick, pray for us. Saint Raphael the Archangel, pray for us. San Roque, pray for us. San Lorenzo Ruiz, pray for us. San Pedro Calungsod, pray for us. God of all faithfulness, grant that our behavior be always in accordance with the gospel of life we profess, and a witness to Jesus, the only Savior of the world, 
who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated. Please all stand. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of His name, for our good and the good of all His holy church. May the Holy Spirit, O Lord, sanctify these gifts laid upon your altar, just as He fulfilled, just as He filled with His power the womb of the Blessed Virgin Mary, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord, our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For all the oracles of the prophets foretold him, the Virgin Mother longed for him, with love beyond all telling. John the Baptist sang of his coming and proclaimed his presence when he came. It is by his gift that already we rejoice at the mystery of his nativity, so that he may find us watchful in prayer and exultant in his praise. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, 
as without end we acclaim. Please own him. We give you praise, Father most holy, for you are great, and you have fashioned all your works in wisdom and in love. You formed man in your own image and entrusted the whole world to his care, so that in serving you alone, the Creator, he might have dominion over all creatures. And when through disobedience he had lost your friendship, you did not abandon him to the domain of death. For you came in mercy to the aid of all, so that those who seek might find you. Time and again you offered them covenants, and through the prophets taught them to look forward to salvation. And you so loved the world, Father most holy, that in the fullness of time you sent your only begotten Son to be our Savior, made incarnate by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He shared our human nature in all things but sin. To the poor he proclaimed the good news of salvation, to prisoners freedom, and to the sorrowful of heart joy. To accomplish your plan he gave himself up to death, and rising from the dead he destroyed death and restored life, and that we might live no longer for ourselves, but for him who died and rose again for us. He sent the Holy Spirit from you, Father, as the first fruits for those who believe, so that bringing to perfection his work in the world, he might sanctify creation to the full. Therefore, O Lord, we pray, may the same Holy Spirit graciously sanctify these offerings, that they may become the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ for the celebration of this great mystery, which he himself left us as an eternal covenant. For when the hour had come for him to be glorified by you, Father most holy, having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. And while they were at supper, he took bread, blessed and broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, taking the chalice filled with the fruit of the vine, he gave thanks and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith.
Therefore, O Lord, as we now celebrate the memorial of our redemption, we remember Christ's death and his descent to the realm of the dead. We proclaim his resurrection and his ascension to your right hand. And as we await his coming in glory, we offer you his body and blood, the sacrifice acceptable to you, which brings salvation to the whole world. Look, O Lord, upon the sacrifice which you yourself have provided for your church and grant in your loving kindness to all who partake of this one bread and one chalice that gathered into one body by the Holy Spirit, they may truly become a living sacrifice in Christ to the praise of your glory. Therefore, Lord, remember now all for whom we offer this sacrifice, especially your servant, Francis, our Pope, and Jose, our Bishop, and the whole order of bishops, all the clergy, those who take part in this offering, those gathered here before you, your entire people, and all who seek you with a sincere heart. Remember also those who have died in the peace of your Christ and all the dead whose faith you alone have known. To all of us, your children, grant, O merciful Father, that we may enter into a heavenly inheritance with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her most chaste spouse, and with your apostles and saints in your kingdom. There, with the whole of creation, freed from the corruption of sin and death, may we glorify you through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Jesus taught us to call God our Father, and so we have the courage to pray. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, 
as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Please all kneel. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. the body of Christ. Amen. Spiritual communion. O Jesus, I turn toward the holy tabernacle where you live hidden for love of me. I love you, O my God. I cannot receive you in holy communion. Come nevertheless and visit me with your grace. Come spiritually into my heart. Purify it, sanctify it. Render it like unto your own. Amen.
Let us pray. Having received this pledge of eternal redemption, we pray, Almighty God, that as the feast of our salvation draws ever nearer, so we may press forward all the more eagerly to the worthy celebration of the mystery of your Son's nativity, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Some announcements. Our Misa de Gallo, our Christmas Novena Masses, continues tomorrow until the 24th at 4 o'clock in the morning and 6 o'clock in the morning. 
On December 24, our Christmas Midnight Mass will be at 8 o'clock in the evening, 8 p.m. And Christmas Day, December 25, we shall have two Masses at 7.30 a.m., 7.30 in the morning, and 6 o'clock in the evening. We thank you for joining us in this celebration of the Eucharist, and we pray for your families and all your loved ones. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Bow down for the blessing. Keep your family, we pray, O Lord, in your constant care, so that under your protection they may be free from all troubles and by good works show dedication to your name. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. And may the blessing of Almighty God the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit come down on you and remain with you forever. Amen. The Mass has been offered that us bring God's presence to everyone we meet. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God.